Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Crane here, and uh, besides his Atlas, which is still available in all good stores or not? <laughs> uh, no, no, it's not, but there's, oh, a, there's a website, so you yeah. can follow the blogs that I'm putting onto there. Which yeah. is important to see yeah. what we're, yeah. how we're doing. Waiting for the next census to come and then look well, at uh, possibly publishing something else. I'm looking forward to that, but in the meantime, I've got a paper copy. This is the document we're going to be talking about. It's the Isle of Man in Numbers 2020. This is the yearly... Uh, updated just a year, is it, from the government? Yes, it comes out yeah. each year. It's been running for many, many years, but it used to be called the Digest of Statistics, and then it was uh, upgraded to this a few years back. So it comes out every year. It's a, a great document because it gives you all sorts of data about the Isle of Man in one place. Um, so it's not always uh, totally new information in the sense that if you want to know what the population is and things like that, that's from the last census, but they've got some tables and graphs repeated in here. Did, did I read that the headline thing was about the population has sort of gone back up, but it's an older generation again, which we always it, flag up in, every that, time we talk? That's not coming from this document. Not from this that, one. No, that was my, my own uh, research was showing that, something ah. uh, that came out of the... Um, uh, the Comin uh, report, the quarterly Comin report. So at the end of the first quarter, that, that's showing government estimates of the population rising. But the further away you get from the census, the less reliable right. the estimates are. So um, that, that's a different thing. The population figures that it's got in here relate back to the census. They don't include the estimates. It's, it's the solid data from the census. Well, OT, I know we can't do everything. And you've okay. got plenty of graphs and things. But take us through some of the uh, things that you have found interesting, shall we? Okay, well, to give you an idea of the breadth of it, it starts out looking at the Isle of Man economy and, and uh, there's, there's tremendous detail in, in what's there. But as with always with statistics, you really do have to keep your brain in gear when you're reading it, you know, yeah. and trying to read between the lines. And, and even then you can't join up all the dots, if that makes sense, if that's not mixing are, are with you the force. Are frustrated that sometimes the way the graphs are delivered, you know, is almost <coughs> helping them, yeah. I say them, because yeah. the way you interpret it, figures can be sort of massage, I think, is a polite way of putting it. Um, well, I think so long as you, you um, have got a good understanding of what you're looking at, you can, you can see that and, right. and recognise what's there. Um, it, it opens with uh, the, the size of the island's overall economy, the, the, the national income, gross national product, gross domestic product and so on. And um, that's, that's interesting. It, it shows clearly how we had that um, dip in between 2014, 2015, uh, moving into the, and then the year leading up to the census, um, it shows we had that dip. The economy shrank in that period, depending on which measure you're using, perhaps by, by over 3%. And this was part of the picture that led to the population decline. So you see mm. that, and you see the way it's bounced back since. But it's quite interesting that the, um, the gross domestic product, which doesn't include the overseas uh, income from abroad and, and things, sales to abroad, the, 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 just the on-island stuff is currently higher than what's coming from abroad. And there's no explanation of that here, and unless you go on to, and, and this is where the data is links with other places. This data has come from um, a report in October, which was the um, Isle of Man uh, income, the, the public income uh, document. And um, it showed in there how our, our, our trading last year, what we, what we, the money we, we paid overseas and the money that came back from overseas, we lost half a billion on that, which is it's an intriguing figure, you know. So some of these figures you really do have to look behind them very carefully. Have you got answers to that, though? Um, Where that I, half billion is? I haven't, no. And this is one of the difficulties with the Isle of Man's economy. Much of what you see on paper it's very difficult to relate to what's happening on the ground. So it appears here that our, over the last two years, whichever measure you're using, the economy has grown, grown quite healthily over the last two years. But it, it does become more difficult. When you get further down, you see um, a graph, figure two, that shows you that the biggest growth has been in company income, not personal income. So or that the personal income has not been so high. Indeed, in, in real terms, um, the personal income um, between the 2016-17 financial year and, and the last financial year, 2017-18, in real terms, the personal income fell. And so that sort of said, well, okay, this is more complicated than just saying, oh, the economy's grown, you know. Well, there have perhaps been more specific uh, winners and maybe some specific losers in this. Later on it comes to um, 
looking at uh, average weekly income and, and uh, median weekly income and so on. And, and we perhaps touch on that when we get down to that level. So the overall e economic picture, there are some strengths, but when you dig down into it, there are also some questions that you're left with. Mm. And that leaves you to try and figure it out, as you said. So. Well, that's right, yes. It leaves, it leaves anybody who's interested in the data trying to figure it out. You've then got a section on the labour market, and that is just as complicated. You know, in the, in the current administration, we've got this um, a target, part of the, the um, programme for government, of um, growing the economically active population. So when it gives you the economically active population figure, it goes back to the 2016 census. And you can see how difficult it is to calculate because even in the 2016 census when they say how big the economically active population was, that's the people um, with jobs, the people who are unemployed, uh, registered as unemployed, so this is the economically active population. Um, it's possible to have entered the data in the census and always has been that you end up in two of those groups. So you could be um, self-employed and you could be employed because you've got something part-time that you're doing yourself or something and you'll count in both groups and so the numbers are not necessarily what they should be and and then it continues looking at um, uh, what's been happening to the size of the working population and to unemployment and this is where you get frustration because although it's a new document out it's using data up to the end of 2019 for unemployment, for example. So you see the unemployment down at under 400, um, 376, I think, and that, that looks great. But there's a monthly report that comes out on Labour, and the May data that's come out shows that the unemployment is not 376. It, it's up at 1,300 and odd. This know. is since the this is since situation. COVID. So, yeah. so the, the pictures that you're seeing here may well have changed in the six months. Yeah, there. and that will come up, I suppose, next year's report, of course. It, it will, It'll yeah. take a long time before we yeah. see that one, of course. That's right. Yeah. It'll, it'll be a, a while before we see it be interesting to see. Mm. Some of the data you have to keep in your brain in gear, as I say. Figure six, there's about job vacancies by required qualifications. And this is looking at um, um, nearly 9,000 jobs advertised through the Job Centre in 2019. And it's saying very, very clearly that over 60% of those jobs required no qualifications at all. So the, the lower end of the, uh, the the coffee shops and things like that, would it be? Um, uh, it, the, of the, skilled labour, yes. So the percentage of the jobs that required degrees or postgraduate degrees is, is maybe about 13, 14% reading it from the graph. But that, unless you recognise that actually the jobs that are advertised this is not the full range of careers that are available in the Isle of Man. Many of these jobs might actually be jobs with a high turnover that are advertised two or three times going through. So they may be, well, they're unskilled jobs, you know, over half of those. That doesn't reflect the Isle of Man's labour market. So you, you would be wrong to take that and say, oh, this is, this is what it's like in the Isle of Man. Most jobs have no qualification requirements. Yeah, that is odd, isn't it? That, that um, wouldn't be it likely to be the case. Right. Okay. Um, there's an enormous amount in here, Paul. You, you, um, you're quite happy for me to just uh, yeah, I mean, pick some bits out. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, people yeah. can read these graphs that, that watch themselves. It's nice. Yeah. I like what I like is you put some explanation to it because to a lot of people, of course, it doesn't mean that much when you just see these things. You, you need your expert eyes on them. I think. Well, I don't know about that. I, you know, I'm a geographer at the end of the day. <laughs> right. Um, the uh, there's a great section on inflation. Table yeah. seven in there. There's a, there's a graph of inflation, but there's a table that lets you. Um, convert backwards. So if you've got some data of what a, how much something cost in 2010, you've got a, 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 a table in there that you can simply apply and take the, if you know how much houses were in 2010, you multiply it by this figure and that's the equivalent in today's money, you know. So it, it's a, a really useful table to convert going backwards. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll use that on the, looking at the housing further down. And what it's showing at the moment, the, the inflation over these um, uh, last few years, it has sometimes the retail prices index topped 8% in, in June 2017. 8%? Yeah, yeah tremendously high. The um, consumer is, prices yeah. index was 4%, you know, so okay. lower than that. But both of them are around the 2% mark at the moment. Um, the expectation of inflation changing, I and mean, clearly we've got this um, enormous 
global economic issue going on, I, I think the expectation is that um, we'll see uh, a 4.6 percent drop in the global gross domestic product figure okay uh, coming out of covid so enormous change is coming and, and this simply gives the baseline for so much of that and there's a section on company activity and, and most of that doesn't look tremendously positive because the bank deposit base is down funds under management are down number of insurers on the island is is down new company registrations down so so it's an interesting section there so even though the companies have been um it, growth in company income is what's driving the economy, but but a number of these areas are down. So there's, there's changes going on in the economy, and it reflects that. And property is in there, the housing market. It's got a great graph that shows um, average house prices running at about 285,000 per house, average house in, in December 2010 through to a, a very similar figure, just slightly. It's, it's a very resilient-ish graph, isn't but, it? It hasn't but, dipped much. But if you go back and apply this to table seven, okay, that's the inflation. Yeah. If you're following the consumer prices index, oh, right, right. The, the price there was, was higher. So in actual fact, the, pro, the average house price in real, real terms, terms has gone down. down over 40,000. Right. In retail prices index, okay, the, the, the higher measure inflation, which includes house prices and so on, the average house price down a hundred thousand. Okay, so the, the, somewhere there you, you, you take your pick, but the, the, in terms of um, what this is, what the houses are worth. Interesting. The state um, agents would say everything's fine, or it's this this bit of the market is doing well. This, but you know, the usual mm, thing. Mm. It's hard to tell exactly where that. Yeah market yeah. in that those numbers directly like that I suppose. It's got graphs showing how the property transactions ah. really dropped, dropped quite sharply as, as in terms of from about December 2018 through to the end of 2019. So that's, that's a, a, an interesting graph. Do you know what that was about? Graph. Any particular thing? Um, Is that a it, no, I think it's very, thing is. very difficult yeah. to, to sort of pinpoint that. That's where you, you're then trying to say, well, how, this does, how does this relate to the real world out there because the demand for new housing is still quite strong, you know. Yeah, the building. Yeah. 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 It's got sections in here on shipping registry, aircraft registries and, and some things like that. And there's the earnings section and they're, they're interesting because in particular the, um, if you take the average weekly earnings there, um, between 2017 and 2019, they've fallen even without applying inflation. You know, so so the average weekly earnings are, are, are down there. If you applied um, that going backwards, if you applied the the inflation to those figures, um, we can see how uh, earnings, especially for that that sorry that particularly was for non-manual workers that I was looking at, the manual workers' uh, incomes have have risen a bit in in the last two years. And that's been interesting to see. But again, the, the pictures on these average um, weekly earnings, median weekly earnings, they don't suggest that this growth in the economy is, is, is getting through to the grassroots, as it were, yeah. okay, which is back to the, the, the earlier graph I said that showed the growth um, in uh, company income, but not in personal income. Right. You know, so. I mean, you got loads. We could be here all day, but yeah. is there anyone <coughs> particularly one of any other highlights before I just want to wrap you up with a sort of summary on, on <coughs> what you were finding out? Um, so, many, so many things there, isn't there? There is, there is so much. <coughs> um, you can see how some of the benefits have changed, in particular the when child benefit became means tested from 2014. You can see how the amount being paid out for that fell. <clears throat> There's a population section there. Yes, it's worth picking up on that. Um, are we going up on that <clears throat> on theirs? The population figures here, the new figures are 2016. It's the census figures. Right. So they, what they have, but the only new they've got is the births and deaths. Um, I know at least uh, one media source on the island this week was talking about the fact that the for the fifth year running, uh, deaths have exceeded births. But that actually was data that um, we had back in January, you know, I, I put a blog on the website, uh, the Isle of Man Population Atlas website, I put a blog there in, in, in January, I think, that was covering this gap between births and deaths, uh, and that's, um, that's persistent. Um, I've seen another, social, um, another media outlet in the Isle of Man that has talked about the big decline in marriages between 2018 and 2016. There's a graph here 
figure 34 that shows this big decline. It actually but was a blip up, wasn't it, rather than you, back on where it, roughly where it was a few you, years ago? You've got to read the small print that says, and marriages registered for 2019 don't yet include marriages registered at churches. So the state are missing, unless you've read They're the missing footnote. missing data. Unless you've read the footnote, yeah. you, you're reaching the conclusion, oh, big fall in the number of marriages. But, but uh, no, there's some That's data missing. Data. Yeah. There's a great graph showing the registered electors and the, and the problems that were there. When all those people got taken off the yes, list. Yeah, it's, it, it's they're there. They're doing another update at the minute, aren't they? So <laughs> expect some maybe more yeah. turmoil. Yeah. Paul, there's so much there. But, there, um, there is. There, can, it, can you summarise, though? Can you summarise stuff uh, in, in yes, general? It, as a, it you is, know, what people should take out uh, of this? Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend people to look at it. You yeah. know, you're not going to sit and read it. You know, you, you'll dip into it, really. I, yeah. I'll, I'll dip into it for months. We'll just yeah. bring you back another time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. When, <laughs> when it comes out, the, the new information, and, yeah. and we've only scraped the so It yeah. goes off into prison offences, burglaries, you know, it, it also numbers of GPs and dentists. Well, some happy people it's all in there. crunching right. numbers yeah. and making yeah. graphs, that's all. I, I think it, it's a terrific resource. Bear in mind that um, look for the sources to it because if you, yeah. there's, a, there's a monthly labour, un, a monthly unemployment report that comes out, there's a quarterly report to, to council of ministers and, and there's various other um, uh, income reports that are annual and so on. Look at, look at the sources. Look at... Um, Look at what it's saying and what it shows underneath and keep your brain in gear when you're reading it because otherwise you can uh, come out of it uh, with a misunderstanding. Uh, should we be worried? Let's try that question. I mean, you know, in general, how are things looking as Arleman PLC? Can you, is that too difficult to wrap that one in, in one? Um, I wouldn't like to try and do that in one. You know, it's, um, it's always going to be swings and roundabouts, yeah. isn't it? In some areas we're doing well, in other areas we're not. I think the population is not yet back to the 2011 figure so we're, we're still um, down on that we are still the population is still aging if you look at the number of people registered with doctors that's still aging i think one thing that the um, the Isle of Man in Numbers does do is, is give us a terrific opportunity as we move to the next census and beyond to update the way change the way we present some of the data you know i think there's, there's some some exciting opportunities um, and I think it's uh, it's good to have this and it's good to have a single source that you can go to and, and find the information.